All right, man. You ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. The world's about to hear your story for the first time. I, I think for, is this the first podcast you've ever done? Like as far as like talking about your haunt career and everything? Yeah, it is actually. It was only my third year uh, doing haunt. So. Well, I'm I'm glad I get to be the person to uh, introduce you to the world of podcasting. Uh, I know you probably you probably listened to a bunch. Um, mine's not in, not on that list whatsoever. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I want to thank you again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got Matt, aka Hate Breed, here. Uh, you, yep. I, 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 I thought I recognized that name at first. I think I've seen that band at like slip or not fest or something but you know i mean that's really yeah, it's it's a band name i i joined the ranks of uh musical haunt names because there like there's, there's a there's a slipknot there's sinatra obviously so it's, i kind of joined that one it's nice keeping it going man keeping the new generation uh fresh i like it i like it a lot exactly Man, I I have to say now now we 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 have a, a a few things we're gonna we're gonna talk about today. I want I want to talk about what got you into Han, all that stuff. But uh, I have to start off by saying this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, to the fans out there, to everyone who wrote in. Um, we had so many requests, um, suggestions of of so many people you guys want to see on the podcast. I am so overwhelmed with joy about that. I've even had monsters themselves. Matt included, who have uh, personally hit me up and 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 asked if they were, if we were willing to do a recording, and of course I, I I always jump on that opportunity. I always say yes to it. Uh, so thank you everyone for all your suggestions. We are going to be slowly working towards everyone that everyone requested. But today, kicking off what we like to call Forsaken Month here on the Mindless Horror Podcast, uh, we got Matt from Forsaken Lake. 50th anniversary, dude. I mean, this was a big one. And one. this one, like I, I, I've th the energy of Forsaken Lake has never, I've never seen it at this level. I mean, it's it's there's energy there, yeah. but this year it was just like there was just everyone just put on their game faces and and killed it. Yeah, I think part of it was having Deets as our lead, because um, obviously we all, I mean, uh, the Returners knew because um, they had been there for a year. They were like, yeah, Forsaken's always kind of been like the bottom all of us newcomers because there are actually quite a few new like all my role because i was i was a footman so we were the ones that like, carried the lanterns at the back um all four of us were brand new all like uh i came from dark ride and paranormal link in 21 and 22 um luther came from cs uh zach completely brand new first time ever working a haunt um and then david uh he i i'm he he left early due to personal reasons, but uh, I mean, he was also brand new. Um, so we all came together for this zone, and Deets was like, "All right, this zone has not had the best reputation. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, this, and this." And it turned out great. We all put out everything that we wanted to. If he had any comments for us, uh, he gave those, but he let us have free roam of our characters and just build the legacy that the lake had this past year. No, a hundred percent. Uh, I, I think, and, and I want to let the record show cause I know he's watching. I did not bring you up first this time. That was all Matt. I'm just, now we're going to, now we're going to have, now we're going to talk about it because he, he brought you up, but I didn't bring you up this time and we didn't talk about it beforehand. So I, I had no idea what Matt was going to come in and say, I didn't bring you up. He, it's an ongoing hey, uh, thing our, with us. Our leadership, our, our leadership was the best. That's why I had to bring him up. It was him, yeah. him and Jeremy both leading all of us it was with their leadership and their guidance that gave us the success that we had this year i mean you you look at the the okay you look at like the history of just overall the event you know 50 years this is a big milestone for the event a big birthday for the event and then you look down at uh, at you look over at a zone like forsaken lake and I think the challenge arose for them is like, what are we going to do to make that zone pop, to make that stand out, to make that feel special for the 50th anniversary? And they added all these like awesome lantern, you know, experiences. They added like all these, you know, I, I felt like the show was just like it, the rhythm was there. And I think that has everything to do with mm -hmm. you guys. I mean, you, you guys coming in and, and kind of filling those, those, those shoes and, and those, and those, and those, you know, those personas of just bringing yep, that, the light to characters. life. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it's just, it's so 
awesome to see it all come to life, you know, and, and I, I really just would remember the nights just sitting there for a bit and just seeing people drop, people screaming. Like it, it was probably the best, like I said, the best version of Forsaken Lake I've ever seen going to this event. And you guys knocked it out of the park this year. So I had to get that off my chest. Um, I think you're one of the first I'm talking to from Forsaken Lake as far as podcasts go. Uh, so yeah, you know, that, that, is well said. I know Sammy, if he were here, he would talk very highly of all the energy. Uh, he did very much on our, on our um, review for 2023, but it, it's been, it's been a freaking amazing ride every weekend to see you guys do your thing. It was, I, I, I know for me and everyone else, like even Lex, cause Lex was pretty much my running partner. Cause we were so in tune with everything we did. Like I'd be trailing right behind the two of us just walking through and we both hit the same stair at the same exact time. You're just so in tune and like with every, all of us in the lake are from our reapers down to like our role, the footmen, um, all of us kind of just gave it our all. And we all wanted to make it a special year for us just because obviously the lake hadn't been the best. So we just wanted to bring the best qualities of all of it coming from like the, the elegant side to the aggressive side. And something that I wanted to do is obviously the lake was elegant. But the way that I portrayed my character was very aggressive and like super fast and kind of running around. And it kind of gave that contrast that it kind of needed because it's always been more on the elegant side, more, oh, we're kind of just swaying along. We're here. There hasn't been really that push. And I know Lex as well brought that. So we kind of combined everything and made it how it, how it was, how it probably should have been since opening year. Yeah, and no hate uh, to the, the opening years either. Like they were great. It's just, it sort of was building up to this moment. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I think going into the 50th, everyone just had that mindset of this, because this is a special event. This is the 50th. This is where it all started a milestone year. And, and people just wanted to give it their all out of, as like a big thank you for 50 years of just one of the greatest haunts to ever live. Um, if not the greatest haunt to ever live. So, I mean, it's, it's yeah. You know, it, it's it's special, you know, and and you saw that all across the board as far as everyone goes. There was, you know, in every zone, every maze, everyone was giving it their all. And and even, mm -hmm. you know, with the with the performers in the shows, like they were even giving it their all every performance. You know, it was just it was just a big party vibe. Everyone just loved being there, you know, and and I, I, I you know, as a guest, I just love seeing the energy and, and just love being around people who love being there. You know, it was just a lot of fun and it brought a lot of, you know, positive moments and, and memories that I'll never forget from the 50th. But I want to, you know, we, I know there's a lot we can talk about the 50th. I want to talk about the process for you getting into it. But uh, first, let, let's take it from the beginning. Let, let's 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 rewind the clock a little bit. Uh, where uh, what was it for you that that really got you into the world of, of horror or haunt? Well, it's actually a kind of funny story. I used to absolutely hate horror stuff as a kid. I was terrified of it. I wouldn't even go in like a Target Halloween section. <laughs> my parents can vouch for this. It's, it's hilarious. I, there, my my uh, aunt and uncle have a Frankenstein bust, and I used to call it the neck. I was so terrified of it. <laughs> but then, like, I got to like high school, and it kind of just clicked. Like, uh, one of my best friends, he went in 2015. He was like, "Dude, it's amazing. You got to go." Following year 2016, walking into Shadowlands, and I was looking around, and I was just like this is amazing. I want to do this. Right. And especially having a, an amazing maze like Shadowlands be the first one that, that kind of yeah. amazing, really left a big impression on me. And then hitting Paranormal Link, hitting uh, Voodoo, hitting Tooth Fairy, just all these heavy hitters. It was like, wow, I've been missing out. <laughs> good, good. That was a good year, 2016, if I have to say so myself, too. Yeah, sort of then, 2017, uh, I did the same thing, went to Scary Farm. 2018, I actually I skipped out on Scary Farm. I kind of wish I didn't now. But that was the year of Horror Nights for me and going to Horror Nights for the first time. And that was when I solidified it where I wanted to actually be one of the ones that scared. Um, 2019, again, solidified it going to both events. And I was just like, next year I'm doing it. Unfortunately, that happened to be the pandemic. So nothing, nothing came of that year. I was like, I'm so ready. I'm going to go for it. And then everything shut down. <laughs> so come 21, 2021, um, I actually originally applied for Horror Nights, but they never got back to me. So kind of just, I got ghosted by them. Uh, I later found out it was probably just due to rehire stuff because obviously the, the year was coming back. They just wanted people to 
come back and all. So I went to an open cast call for Scary Farm because I was like, oh, this just popped up randomly. I might as well just go out, go through the audition, and they cast me in Paranormal Inc. And I'm like, nice. one of the greatest mazes of all time that Knotts has had, and I got the honor of closing it. So I was like, all right, this is this is the start of my journey. And, I, and you know what? And then that's special because, you know, like you said, Paranormal Inc. was one of those mazes that like a lot of people still talk about. I've even heard people like it, it popped up in another Cedar Fair Park uh, last season for uh, another run. Yeah, uh, Carowinds. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I even heard so many people like not even like lying, like wanting to take a trip over there just to see it again, you know, because it's just mm -hmm. such a beautiful, well put together maze. I really wish they would have continued with that concept of like making new episodes based around the, the property. Yeah, that's, you know, that's something that I've said too. just having like because it's case 13. What if we went back and saw like case 10 or like yeah. case five or something like that? Just see, like bring the cast back and kind of get the the moment up to Hayden Hill where obviously everything went to hell. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you, you can do you can do a paranormal ink maze like every so like every couple of years, and people will not get sick of it because it'll be a new concept. Especially bringing John Cook back every single time. Yeah, he, cookbook certified. We yes, that's the Bible on the Knights of Horror. The cookbook, we love it. He's the man. Yeah, uh, he's <laughs> he's my favorite designer, and uh, I I can't be biased. I closed two of his mazes, but. <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> every 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 time I've gone to the event, it's always been his mazes that stick out to me, and I'm just like, I I mean, it's part of why I want to be a designer eventually. It's just his mazes kind of inspired me like that. And I literally have nothing bad to say about that man. That guy is just we need to protect him at all costs. I agree. He's he's all I've, I've talked to him a bunch of times in person, especially at conventions and all. Because like I work Midsummer Scream, so I've seen him out there, and I just see him in passing give a little conversation and we're on the way you know john cook if you ever need a security guard at these conventions knights of horse security just exclusively for you <laughs> we got you hey, well, yeah, i've I, seen you walk through the conventions and also there you go you know what i mean but um I mean, yeah, I mean, what a great maze to be casted in. I mean, as far as your, you know, your first year on and to close out such an iconic maze, you know, and, and it's such a fan favorite maze, even on its closing, yeah. closing year, you guys had a huge line for that thing, you know? Yeah, I think uh, but it was partly in two, again, with our leadership, because uh, our lead for that year was uh, Greg Daniel Seaweed from Ghost Town. Right. So he was the one in charge of us. He kind of taught us to treat it as if it was like a street spot so we we kind of just gave that aggression from the opening night and everyone seemed to love it i mean I, I i had one of the best rooms i had the red laser hallway at the very end so i had that high being able to hide behind that laser and just charge at people oh yeah yeah no that that laser you know, is one of those things that, especially when I, I remember going, first going through that and not being able to see anything. And then like, you know, I, like you said, people just charging out of it. People really have taken advantage of that good of a spot, you know, to really get that mm -hmm. final scare before the final scare, you know, and it's like to, you know, to take you from the, the one dimension to another. That's what I, and that's what I really loved about that maze, especially at that ending. That was one of my favorite things to see is like how they kind of, pulled a shining on you if that makes sense you know that yeah it's it, it went from the old decrepit hospital and you're just like wait what is this and it's like you go back in time it's sort of like a portal to purgatory going back to the heyday and everything's just running loose like you see the big demon that used to be there in the walls it's oh. it was a genius ending when they brought it in Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I think that I think that that's probably one of my all-time favorite maze endings to anything. I mean, just with the simple effects that that was used to to design it. You know, like you said, walking through that hallway and it looks fine, and then the lights flicker, flicker, and you still see the demon. So it's kind of like one of those. Yeah, it's kind of like, is this real or is this still a dream? Like kind of scenario, you know? So the theming, uh, I can rave about that maze all the time because uh, closing it, working it being a fan of it was just the start of it. it it was just incredible the same with dark ride i know dark ride kind of got a little bit of hate towards its the end of its run but the way that we closed it out i feel like we did it right as well oh dude i dark ride for for starters on the nights of horror has been one of our all-time favorites dark, dark ride itself is such a brilliant concept for a maze I, I honestly can walk through it even without 
monsters in it and I'd still have a great time. That's just how good of a maze it, and well designed it yeah. is. And and you know, getting to do that in the behind the fog tour, that was just a dream come true. The the coolest part about that too is if you actually paid attention to where you're walking, it did follow the same track all the way through. Yeah. Like when you go into that the first scene with that big like castle and you go into the side area, when you spit back out inside, it actually is on the other side of that wall. That's it was so just cool. genius how they put it together. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got I, I got I got to work the final room. So big um, open space. So I got to work with like Yep, work with like six other actors and we all just were like dropping people left and right in there. Dude, that I that right there I, I've always said is is Dark Ride's very own scare zone right there, that ending scene. That's like you have so much freedom and fun to bounce back and forth. And you know, it, it's 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 funny, you know, kind of looking at Dark Ride, you know, for the floor print for that, and then kind of looking at Cinema Slasher this year, and you're just kind of like I can't believe this is all the same area. Like, to be honest with you. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, when I walked through Slasher on my night off, I was like, I can't believe this is the same building Dark Ride was in. Like, this is a massive scale maze to be fit in this tiny building. Yeah. No. I, and they do, a, they did an amazing job of utilizing the space as much as possible to really maximize the experience. And I feel like, um, both Dark Ride and Cinema Slasher so far have nailed that that concept of of just kind of utilizing the most of that space to the best of their ability to give you the most and best experience as to what they want to immerse you in. So like kudos to them because they've done it two years in a row now that I've seen in that building. So Yeah. I mean, obviously Trapped was there before Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter was it was one of those ones a lot of people forget about. But even then, they still use the space pretty well. So it's it, Boardwalk Ballroom's got a very solid track record of yeah. bases that have been in there. About 100%, dude, 100%. And, you know, you go from the transition of having that that kind of paranormal vibe in Paranormal Inc. to kind of that transition of playing the uh, the Carnies taking over the dark ride, you know? So, so what was mm -hmm. the transitional period for you like that to kind of come up with this new character for a more chaotic kind of feeling compared to, like, uh, a demon character? Yeah, so it, it was a big shift. I mean, obviously, becoming a demon, uh, I just had to be more aggressive, less speaking because I, I didn't speak as a role i kind of just used my voice used roars growls the snarl obviously because everyone does the snarl now um so i went from that to because I, I played the dunce so the dunce was kind of like a childlike clown so i kind of pitched my voice a little bit higher i was always screaming kind of had a lot of energy bouncing off the walls so i kind of just wanted to play that um and i i confused my castmates too because i would be on like one side of the room and then they'd look away for a second. I'd already be on the other half of the room just because I, I was bouncing r back and forth constantly <laughs> through through the room using the space the best I could, which they probably were testing me for streets because I got forsaken like the next year. Man, I mean, you were I mean, you talk about like I said, you talk about having that open space to do that, too. I mean, not a lot of mazes are fortunate enough to kind of get that freedom to have that space to do something like that. And with a design like Dark Ride, I mean, they, that give you that freedom, man. You can hop on the stage and get them while they come in and then meet them at the end when they leave. You know, it was just one of those things where, like, you could have gotten scared by the same person twice and wouldn't even known it, you know, and, and that's the people, best part people about constantly, that. People constantly said, they're like, oh, my God, there's two of them when I got them a second time. Because, like, yeah. my, I, I sort of hung towards the back of the room. That was kind of my play area back there. But I would shoot myself through the scaffolding. Because like there was that big middle scaffolding. There was a little tiny That's slot right. right before they go. I would shoot myself right through there and just get people. And then coming back around, I'd get them a, a second time as they came out from that door. And then there was a pathway under the slide, and I'd get them a third time coming through. Man, I mean... And another thing that I loved about that room too is like that. How many times did you guys go up the? I mean, the slide, man. You, I mean, I know you guys probably had some fun on that slide. It was steep to climb up, but it was a lot of fun. I, for me, it was a little bit harder because I had a giant ring in my pants. Right. So it was a, a bit harder with that. But I know our, um, our like doll character, she went up there quite frequently and slid down it. Oh man, yeah. I mean, I, I there, I, I can't tell you how many times not even paying attention to the slide like i see it when i first walk in and then i my focus is focused elsewhere and then all of a sudden a yep. slide scared i'm just like 
You literally slid and scared me, and you didn't even have to use knee pads for it. Yeah, there, there, was, there, there was so much to look at in that room that caused distractions, which made it perfect for us to pop out at. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, Dark Ride, it, it, w- it was just, you know, like you said, a lot of distractions, even to the point where there was a scene where there was literally a chair that scared you. You know what I mean? Like such a brilliant idea for a scare. No one would even think of that, you know, and, and it's and it's taking a kind of a reference to like the old school cartoons of like, you know, the ghouls and everything like Dark Ride was so cheesy in the best way possible, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and I, I think it really brought out the childhood like carnival rides that we all used to ride every time the carnival would come into town those dark rides just like had no they didn't make no sense to them but like it was they were still fun to get on yeah Yeah. i mean i mean that's kind of what the the whole concept was it was supposed to be very run down from like the 80s or so um so the effects weren't working the best and it kind of worked in its favor towards the end of the run because some of the effects were a little bit broken (laughs) um like uh, the the big hands in our room they actually uh, one of them started squeaking like halfway through the season, okay. so like all all we could hear in there was just <laughs> that's all we would hear, and it's and guests were like covering their ears, or like we can't do anything about this. It's just the mechanism isn't like all there, well, it's but funny, it worked for the theming. You know, yeah, for real. And it, what's funny is you say guests covering the ears, but you guys are the ones that had to stay in there almost all night to hear it. Like, how how do you put up with that? You just put on some earplugs eventually? We we did. So that was the year they brought back the earplugs. So uh, every actor in the maze had to wear earplugs just because of how loud it was. Right. And especially in that room, because the soundtrack, I remember I was standing in there a few nights. And when that big drop hit at the very beginning, the ground shook. Oh, and I'm wow. Like, yeah, this is loud. I'm glad I have the earplugs in. <laughs> <laughs> Straight causing earthquakes before the freaking night even starts right there. Man. Yeah. People people would try to come up the exit too. Because oh, like wow. it's the beginning of the night because it, it sped out right next to the log ride. Right. People would constantly just come up the ramp and we'd have to be like, no, got to go back around. Go the other way. This is the exit. <laughs> Not to mention, you know, I I, I would say about a uh, it was like a, a year or two ago they added the uh, the gift shop at the end, which that was always yes. I thought th- I thought that was a fun little addition. You know, I mean, you think you're actually going into a gift shop and it's actually like a, a scare. Like it was probably one of the mm-hmm. greatest things they ever added. You know? Yeah, it fit it fit the entire experience. It was like that that last cherry on top. Right, it was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> Man, so so 2021, you you get into knots and you close out paranormal. Uh, you have a freaking amazing time doing that. We, you know, we've established one of the greatest mazes ever made, made right there. Yeah. You know, um, 2022, you come back, uh, you close out another classic dark ride. Um, another great maze right there. Another well-designed maze and yeah. a cookbook classic 2023, the 50th anniversary, the long awaited 50th anniversary uh this was a huge one for the entire event as a whole for the fans for everyone that's been a part of it um everyone who's ever worked it everyone who's ever brought it to life uh behind the scenes in front in front on stage whatever you want to call it whatever you want to say this was it this was the mecca the 50th anniversary um talk to me about you know your nerves going to in, going into audition and then how you felt coming out of your audition Nerves were, were pretty high because I was like, I'm really hoping to get streets. That's really all I want. If I get mazed, not the end of the world. I'd still play it the best that I could, just I have the other years. Um, but I remember I was walking in and they were actually a little bit behind on schedule. So we got into our, our time a little bit late. Um, so we're kind of just sitting there in the auditorium, kind of just waiting and waiting. I hear everyone else auditioning and I'm just like, it's almost this. It's almost this moment. Um, uh, obviously I'm not going to talk too much about the process because we're right. Can't yeah. Really do that. Um, no, it's fine. Yeah, we, I know. I want to keep that a secret. <laughs> yeah. We, although the thing that set my nerves off, we, we were told there weren't any streets positions. Oh, so wow. they, I, I, I don't know if they were testing us or whatnot, but yeah, they announced that to every audition group. Um, and then I get pulled up at the very end. Uh, I got pulled up last. So uh, uh, again, my nerves were killing me. Mm-hmm. Um, they call me up. They're like, what role are you? I'm like, oh, it was the Dunce Clown and Dark Ride. Uh, I also got Monster of the Year for that year. So it's like, 
uh, Dunce Clown, Dark Ride, Monster of the Year, A cast. They're like, okay, cool. And they called me up and like, I want to offer you the footman position in Forsaken Lake. Instantly, I just like lit up and like, the, like do you want to accept this role? I was like, yes, I do. I want to accept this role. <laughs> uh, so I, I was like, I got streets. I got streets for the 50th. This is incredible. They want to have me out there for a monumental year. Um, and then obviously having Forsaken be the reputation it has, I was a little bit nervous. I was like, what are people going to think of this once they find out I'm I'm here? Right. Um, so opening night rolls around. We kind of had a little bit of experience scaring at scare school and all. Uh, I actually ended up being a little bit late for opening night. So I was freaking out. I was like, I'm zipping through gauntlet and trying to get to our break area. Um, but I get in costume. I get in everything. I'm out there and I'm left and right just bouncing off people. And it's like, OK, I d- had nothing to fear. This is like second nature already. I love that confidence right there. That's that's that right there to me, like hearing that, you know, as a casual fan, you know, take Knights of Horror out of the equation, but just hearing that as a fan, you know, that yeah. right there just gets me excited to go to an event knowing that these these guys have just as much energy, if not more energy than I do. You know? Yeah. I, I was one of the ones that was super energetic out there. I would always be like full sprinting at people. I was, like I said, bouncing left and right off of groups. I hung out mainly in Mission Row, which is like where we marched down for the procession. Uh, I would sometimes go over to Silver Bullet and scare over there, but Mission Row is where I hung out the most. Uh, it's where I got the most scares of, of anything. That is actually where I got you as well. Yeah. Because I, I was... I, yeah. <laughs> I was the one that came up to you and flung the cloak right at you. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, I could see that. <laughs> I, I, it's there. There was a lot of foggy, dark times in the, in the lake, and uh, there may have been some things that the uh, current try not to get scared champion got scared of. But you know, it is what it is. You know, that means they they got me. That means they freaking they succeeded, man. They they won. I'll take the yeah, loss. I, I remember. One. I I I just saw like because I, I get so into character. Like I, I'm I'm like my character i'm not me so i'm kind of just looking through i don't really see faces half the time so all, i remember i was walking behind i just see tall and i just went boom and i look over and i see it's you and you're just like you know what that actually got me good job <laughs> and i was like oh okay <laughs> yeah no i'll i'll, 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 I'll full-blown i'll be honest like if, if you got me and this goes to any monster at any haunt i go to if you get me out of respect i'll be like that actually got me like awesome like because you know nowadays you know you start covering these things and you just kind of go and you're more amazed and and blown away by things mm-hmm. rather than getting scared you know you're just more fanboying now than getting scared so when i actually do get yeah. scared now it's like it's it's I, I i will thank you i'll be like thank you that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> i remember I was, and obviously so like that was basically the energy i had the whole season oh, and yeah. the funniest part too was uh, again with you uh after season because like a bunch of our friends we have like a whole discord server um, a video got sent in there and I was watching it and I was like, wait a minute, that's me. And like, I, I listened to it with the sound. It's Hayes' video of a, a specific moment where I'm circling around you guys, getting everyone. And I just hear you like, I don't know who you are, but you are on fire right now. Yeah, <laughs> just like, that sounds it, a, I, like, yeah. Wow. I, I think she's going to be very happy to know that you, that sh- someone sent her video out because she's always stressing me out like do you know this character whose videos is like can you tag them and send them like yeah i got you like so you probably just made her day so i really appreciate that (laughs) yeah it was it was incredible i I didn't i didn't know that moment was caught on because i just remember being there and hearing you say that and you're like oh we got to get you on slider gear now um and i'm like i was i literally went up i'm like this is my first year and you're like your first year i'm like yeah it's first year on streets and you're just like wow you can't wait for next year Oh yeah, I, I I I did get let off the leash for sliding, so I I slid the last couple nights. Like I did the apprenticeship, and I was talking to dudes like at the Decade event a couple nights ago, and he was like, "I I wish I could have let you off sooner. You were ready before anything." That's that. And that's so the I, man. That's the man you want to talk to about that man. If you're interested in more, that's the man you want to yeah. talk to. That's that's what was a huge compliment for me because like coming from him, I was like, "Wow, I I." I I feel ready for the next couple of years. If I do end up sliding wherever I go. Right. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. Like I said, uh, you, you did show off some energy this year. That was like, 
I don't like I like I said, I was like, I don't know who you are, but <laughs> damn, are you on fire? And look at a couple months later, now we we the circle has reconnected. Yeah. Now now I, know I, I was like I was like I'm. I was like, I'm waiting for the moment where I could just tell him, like, yeah, that was me. That's awesome, dude. No, and and, and that was 100% genuine. Like, I I just could not believe the amount of – and it wasn't just – I mean, you were on fire. Like, the entire yeah. cast, like, no matter what set was out there or who, who was out there, who was on break, they kept the energy going, whether they had freaking five people or where they had 20 people. They kept that energy going. We we had We had a very, very good cast this year. All of us, real like, instead of in previous years where people were like, oh, I'm in Forsaken Lake, I guess I'll just take this year and we'll see where I go next year. All of us got it and we were like, let's go. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're taking this. We want to do this. And I, we, we did some crazy stuff out there. Like, like I would, I would be up on the pole of Silver Bullet and like lean down at people and all that. Um, Zach, who I mentioned earlier, first year he was doing backflips in the zone like he would backflip into so a crawl your friend. Just, yeah that was okay. that was our other footman we just talked about that in the ragdoll podcast and he said he went on in one of the nights and he was just <laughs> blown away by this guy doing backflips and i was like i wish i could have seen that because damn i would have complimented the shit out of him for that one yeah he he did that he would vault over the cemetery walls and you know how tall those are this guy's into parkour he, isn't he he plays Spider Man, so yeah. Oh, he that's plays why Spider Man. That's we we, yep. we nicknamed him Slider Man, aka Peter Parkour. That's what was the names oh, we gave him. Wow, good word, good play on words with you guys. Congratulations, that that deserves a round of applause for sure. <laughs> the I the like lake's very good with our with our jokes. We we I, I came into work one day and we're like, oh yeah, we gave Zach a new nickname. I was like, what was it? And they're like Peter Parkour. Like, that's perfect. <laughs> he he was our, our like, Slider Man. <laughs> yep. No, he was our rookie of the year, and he he definitely deserved it. You know what that means next season, right? The first thing I'm going to say when I well, the first thing I'm going to say when I see him is like, I'm going to need pictures of Slider Man. <laughs> <laughs> if he sees this, which he probably will, because I'll like put it on my story once it's once it's actually up, I'll be like, yeah, you're referenced in this because I ta- I gave you so much praise. Oh man, yeah, I I think that uh you know, and I and I had a lot of friends come out from the East Coast who had never been to the event. They came out to celebrate the fiftieth. Uh, some people out from the East Coast who have been in the event and just wanted to come back because they loved it last year, uh, and they yeah. talked very highly about this year. You know, I would I I got to talk with them, meet up with my with my with my friends, and talk with them and see what they thought about it. My brothers, um, and and you know, it was really cool to see their whole um opinions about it. You know, they're used to kind of what you know the big haunt out there in orlando is hhn you know and that's their yep. big haunt you know but now sea world's starting to come out with the hollow screams and you know all these yep. other little haunts are starting to pop up so that's that's really cool for them out there but you know hhn and everyone kind of knows the formula of how hhn you know operates their kind of thing you know they're very heavily on mm-hmm. you know uh you know very scripted and stuff not saying it's a bad thing at all you know it's, it's just one of those things yeah. where you know that's just their style that's just how they are it's just probably easier for them they cast so many people and and mm-hmm. have so many to fill so but you know it's it's one of those things where you know you, you then you come to an event like knots and knots is a little bit more open and, and free to kind of really express those characters that you guys have designed you guys have kind of made your characters yours you know and and i think that's why it was a very special year in in forsaken i had seen a lot of these characters in the past who were played by other people but I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of the new people who've come in or, you know, if they've been there for a while, they've either, you know, tweaked it or took that character and made it their own, you know? And, and that's what I think I really loved about this this season with Forsaken was you saw a lot of originality with people, how they were portraying their characters. And I really dug that. All of you guys did a phenomenal job on that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I know one of the things that I stressed for the other footmen is it was one of our procession practices before the event. I pulled all all four of us aside. I was like, hey, one thing that I really want us to do is we're the same character, obviously, but we're all different people. We're playing different people in the zone. We want us all to play this character completely different, even though we are the same. So people can see us and be like, oh, they're not the exact same. There are different characters. Because obviously in the zone, heavily with, with the footmen, the pallbearers, the gravediggers being basically the same 
uh, having individuality was something that I really wanted to, to, to bring to them. And all of them agree. They're like, dude, that's a, that's a great idea. And all of us played the character different. And I think that's what succeeded for us, what succeeded for the grave diggers, uh, the pallbearers, everyone played a character different. Everyone gave something different. It all came together. Even our reapers, like our reapers ended up making a whole story where they're actually all related in some way. That's awesome. Um, so like the the main two reapers, um, Joey and Sage, they played them. They basically ended up becoming twins in their storyline because they were always like hand locked together or walking together. They made a whole communication of like just hand squeezes mm-hmm. where they flip around, they attack side to side. It was it was incredible seeing what they did. Like they were our duo of the year. So I I, I haven't seen something that creative since Ghost Town 2019, uh, with the two the chickens. Um, yep. That I mean they created their own language with Bok Box, and I was blown away by that. Now and to see someone like a duo like that, you know, have their own kind of hand signals and what what means, you know, I mean. I assume after a couple of nights, you start to understand and start to get the feel of that vibe of that person and, and just to kind of see that. And then them two, by the way, uh, easily, obviously, they're, they're standouts in, in Forsaken. They're just, you know, you can't miss them. And they were, they were phenomenal. And yep. again, they took those characters and made it themselves. You know, like they, they made their own versions of that character. And, and you know, that's what I love mm-hmm. about it is you're taking these characters and, okay, they did this last year. How can I do something different to stand out differently this year? You know, so I, that's what I love about that. But no, I mean, I, I, I think like, and, 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 ironically like when i when i made the compilation this year for for forsaken i you i'm a it's no secret i'm a big wrestling fan um if you went to knots or if you were at knots or if you worked at knots i do apologize because the about the only word that came out of my mouth most of that most of those runs was the word yeah and it was very obnoxious how i said it but you know i i'm a big la night fan i'm a big wrestling fan so yep um, you you will like lex 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 is a huge on all okay. of that stuff Oh, we're gonna have so some that there'll be, yeah. Lex, Lex also was the only one to have a creative uh, character in Forsaken too. So the character that they portrayed, Clarissa, having the two different personalities, that was the very first created character for the lake. That's awesome. That is awesome. Look at that, making history on the fiftieth right there. Exactly, and they were also the reason for all of our like shit posting in the zone. <laughs> Man, so I we mean... we. Oh. We, we had a lot of really funny moments like we would hide on one of the crypts and just pop out at people because the way the lighting was we just got shadowed that's um, awesome one of our one of our main jokes we would hold up four fingers because there's a cat photo of like the cat with its paws extended and just quattro so we quattro <laughs> uh, we started calling people foreheads because I, I don't know where that sprouted from but that was part of the thing and then the one that we got deets on and he will either contest it or go with it it's kind of been a mix right now but is respect the schmear and we actually got him we got him to say that in the zone but then at banquet he was like oh fuck the schmear and we're all like no <laughs> uh, so it's 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 been a back and forth but it, it, all of our shenanigans pretty much sprouted from lex and obviously he's going to talk about that tomorrow most likely because he's got so many so many things tomorrow to talk about for me next week for y'all <laughs> oh man time that's how time works yeah that's how time works <laughs> you gotta we gotta pre-record these things that way we can edit and not have to worry about recording stuff later um but no i i, I you know lex this year was just someone who every time i came in the zone i feel like they targeted me like crazy and it was hilarious and i thrived on it i even remember getting a message from lex one of the the weekends basically saying hey you know i'm the one that's screaming in your ear like i i do apologize like if it's annoying just let me know i'm like i literally typed back and this was my dead response like i'm not even kidding this was my response i really put i thrive for that kind of stuff keep going um and you know I, why you know you know why lex targeted you right why so it tall. was the whole rank no it was it was ranking forsaken low oh, really okay i mean it, listen. it was Le- listen. lex took it as a personal challenge to be like oh you want to rank the lake this low here i'm gonna bump it up for you 
Y'all did it. Uh, oh, man. I mean, I'll be the first to admit when I'm wrong. And I was wrong. This year, you know, was a, a strong year for the lake. I don't, I don't remember what I what I positioned it, but I know it was a lot. It wasn't last. I'll tell you that. Uh, it wasn't last. Um, yeah, no, I... I uh, yeah, I'll be the first to admit when I'm wrong, and I and I was wrong this year, uh, and I'm glad y'all y'all proved me wrong because that's what I love. You know, you know we we make these videos because, uh, you know, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. From day one, we just wanted to be completely 100% real with the people. You know, we don't want to. Once the camera goes on, we don't want to have that fake persona where it just it's something on camera and it's not the same thing off camera. We're we're gonna be real with you. We're gonna give you our honest opinions and feedback of how we felt about things. Um, and I know a lot of people won't agree with it or like it. Uh, and I do apologize for that. Um, everyone has the right to their own opinion, but, uh, in the end of the day, I just want to be real with my fans. If, if I don't like something, if I do like something, they're there. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, with, with that being said, uh, you know, it, that's why I love making the videos that I make because people like you guys watch them. And literally, and I'm not saying I'm the reason before this because I, I I heavily put this on just it being the 50th anniversary was the reason why everyone's energy was the way it was. Um, but you know, Lex hearing what I had to say and then taking it to that notch up, you know, that is the reason why I love going to haunt, and that's the reason why I love making this content because I have a feeling someone out there who is either new to the zone, has been in the zone for a while, will see it and go. Fuck, you're right. You know, there is something that I can change this year to make this. How can I make this the best year possible? How can I make this a memorable year? And I feel like with Forsaken Lake, I did see that there were a lot of memories there. This was the best year. This 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 hands down has me excited for what's next to come next year. You know how they how you, what what's going to what's going to continue of the legacy of of what you guys built last year. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm excited to see all that. Um but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I apologize, Lex. <laughs> With all that being said, I apologize. You got me good. No, I, you... I, I, I think the the point got across, like, especially oh, after the season. He would come in the break area and be like, "Oh yeah, I saw Knights of Horror. I completely scared the crap out of him." And it's like. Uh, the, the opinion's gonna change right here, right now. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I feel like I had a really big target on my back with Forsaken like this year. I, I honestly, like, <laughs> now kind of looking back on it, I think I had a little bit of a target on my back this year, and I, I kind of. I kind of want to paint a target on my back again this year just to see what zone I can get wild up this year. I don't know. <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm not it, fucking it, for, it may work again. I'm it not fucking with Forsaken Lake this year. I promise you that. Forsaken Lake's actually going on the top of the hype list this year, you believe it or not. So um, I'm hoping to be back, so hopefully I'll bring the same energy as well. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I absolutely have so much fun just watching you guys do what you guys do. I mean, I... You know me, I'm not like the typical photographer or anything that will stand in the middle. Like I, I respect the space. I respect the, you know, yeah. you guys in the end of the day are there to do a job, you know, and that's what you guys are, you know, getting paid for to to put on, you know, this amazing show that that Knots puts together every single season um and to bring it to life and and you know the last thing i want to mm -hmm. do is get in your guys's way that's why i'm usually more off to the side you know kind of just yeah out of your guys's way because i don't want also I, I hate ruining scares you know if they see me mm -hmm. then they're gonna see you you know but if they see me on the other side as a distraction then that's a whole different story it just works in your guys's favor yeah that's that's kind of how i view at least the photographers like i love all the work they do they provided some amazing photos of us but it's like as soon as I see one, it kind of just like that's gonna take me out for a small bit, because like I, I want them to catch moments where we're we're not noticing them, where it's like yeah. they're they're kind of hidden. It's like they, that's how you get the best moments. Obviously, posing for them is kind of just like oh, you're gonna do a little pose. I I did them every so often. I had a little frog with me. I put him in my mouth, and people got <laughs> photos of that. Um, so if there's photos of me out there, it's it, it whatever forsaken monster has the frog here you guys go this is it was me uh but no we had, we had shenanigans like that and i know one of my friends caught uh i tried to take joey's hat off which i ended up succeeding twice i took it off two times <laughs> during the season i ran off with it um but one of my friends caught like opening weekend i tried taking it off he whipped around grabbed my hat just ripped it off and like threw it and i was like no he did the hat it's, man I, they're there are photos of that. I, I have them still. It's it's he's grabbing onto it and it's gone. And it's gone. Just the the forehead of my of my mask and like my hair and the strap and everything. Now, 
you know, you guys talk about things like that. Has has anybody ever? Uh, have you guys ever like, especially you? Have you ever been like nervous that if you did something like that, it's accidentally going to actually go into the water? <laughs> I think that, like, for me, do, as, if if that happened to me, I, I'd just be like, I do down. have I do have one story of that. Yes. Uh, so Nico. He was our hunchback. If you remember seeing our hunchback, okay. he had this very specific slider kick that he would do where he would like kick his whole foot, get like massive smirks at people. I watched his shoe fly off of his foot, go almost into the lake and just hit like right next to these guests. And I was like, what did I just witness? I like walked over to him. I'm like, dude, what happened to your shoe? And he's like, that thing just flew off. <laughs> that's kind of like our our story we gave we gave him the the haunt name live wire because of his sparks and how unpredictable he was and having moments like that but yeah i remember i was just walking towards the mausoleum and i just see just a shoe <laughs> flying across the sky and i'm like what it it did almost go in the lake. I I thought it did at first, and then he oh, picked man. it up, and I'm like, I was like, you got lucky. I'm like, you need to go backstage and put some more zip ties on, bud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, <laughs> it, it it happened twice this season. I only saw one of them, but he told me it happened twice. Oh man, yeah, second time, man. He's got a yeah. That's why he's that's why he's the Motley <laughs> Crew name Livewire. I love that. I love the music. I love that. I love putting music and and horror and haunt together, like especially metal and rock. Like it's two of the best things. My, my, I was, I was going to tell you the story of mine because I know you had asked about it. Uh, obviously, Hatebreed has the song "Destroy Everything." Nice. Uh, Did you destroy some things? everywhere? Everywhere I've been, I have broken something or something on me, <laughs> from costumes to oh, falling man. off of. I, I fell off the morgue table in Paranormal because I was jumping off of it. Wow. Um, dark Ride, it was, I, I had the giant rubber duck with me and I broke that. <laughs> uh, I broke one of the doors open of the crypts in Forsaken and they were those were like bolted in because I was just smacking it because it made a loud sound. Um, so my friend Avi, who was in uh, the gauntlet this past year, he was one of the, the monks, one of the drummers. He was like, Dude, this, they have a song called "Destroy Everything." I'm putting in "Hate Breed," and then it got approved. So nice. So it, it, nice. it kind of fits. So I, if if I end up breaking myself to the point of I can't do this anymore, the name still works. So, man, uh, you know, and that's that's a good way to segue into that future. I'll be obviously like going into you know before we we kind of wrap up that 2023 season for you like what was mm -hmm. it like for you to kind of finally approach that final week and go damn this is it for another year we got to hang it up like and you guys sounded like you guys were such a tight family this year and and everyone was kind of just feeding off everyone's energy and and you know the zone was at its best the show was amazing i, I don't think i've ever mm -hmm. seen it that well choreographed like ever and and just the amount of yeah. people that were involved in it you know that was probably the biggest cast i've ever seen involved with that show um mm -hmm. and, and so to kind of see it all to come together and then that final week and, that, and those final days like what was it as a cast for you guys to kind of you know have those final moments with each other for the for the 2023 season well obviously talking the procession first because you yeah. mentioned the procession um one of the things is we we ended up not doing the whole sway thing that's kind of one right. thing that we changed is we kept it with the music but we we kind of made it more chaotic in a sense as we were marching down um and the one thing we changed this year that had hadn't been in previous years is we took the coffin and actually put it through the mausoleum so the coffin goes through and then the griever pops out which caused trouble for me sometimes because uh, we would have a pallbearer out and i was the only footman our solution i grabbed two handles and walked straight through the mausoleum <laughs> there is a video out there i have seen it i think it's uh like tall guy at the parks or something like that it's one of his live streams and you see me just walk right through the most <laughs> um yeah and i was just like i'm shocked i got caught on camera because i did that like twice in the entire season um yeah the procession we, that kind of built our whole thing is we kind of had a lot of that the chore choreography doing the show moment together it kind of built all that for us and coming up on the last week 
for me personally, I had a, I had a rough couple middle weeks just from guests being stupid. Um, and I was just like, like, this is rough. Like, I, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, obviously those thoughts were coming through final weekend hit that first Wednesday energy of weekend one was back. And I'm like, I don't know why I ever thought this, this is amazing. This is the greatest thing ever. Um, oh, but yeah. obviously it was, it was, it was bittersweet being the final week. We actually, we did a very special procession. Um, Cause if you remember, we had a griever with the blue light in her mouth and then Joey later took that for Reaper. So our very last procession ever, we all had these little blue lights that we put in our mouths and we marched awesome. down with the blue lights, did the show moment with the lights and watch it. We were watching videos back and people were like, wait a minute, why are all their mouths glowing? And it was just a really awesome moment for us just to finally to close it out and be like, this is our last two raw. And it happened to be one of our, our best processions ever. Like we still talk about it to this day. It's like, yeah, that, that last one was the best one we did. Cause we, we just put everything we had into it. Oh yeah. hundred percent last final nights, you know, you guys are, this is it, you know, throw it out. Why not go out with the bang? Right. Um, but I love how much that, that lighting in the mouth thing has caught on at not scary farm from zone to zone and everyone kind of yep. you know, taking it and rolling with it and making it their own, you know, their own colors, all that stuff. Like, I think that is such a, an awesome tactic like not even like it could freak some people out but like for me when i look at that i'm like that is so cool their mouth is yeah. blue it's green it's the, like whatever color they you know? actually uh they joey and destiny who the the griever was they actually kind of had a story with it where he would take the light and it'd be like oh i'm taking her soul and then oh, he yeah. got the light too um so it kind of like was a switch off like oh i have the souls now um, but it also became an inside joke with us where um, he would go to people being stupid and be like, hey, I ate your Nobu necklace. This is a Nobu necklace that's stuck in my throat. <laughs> oh, man. How was it for you this year to, to kind of work with something like the Nobu necklace? I know that was a big controversial thing with the fans and, and a lot. I mean, I, I, I saw the pros and cons of both of it. But what was it like in, in, a, in a monster point of view of, of working around those? It actually wasn't that bad. I know a lot of people were like, oh, we're going to wait and see how it is. And yeah, it, it wasn't that bad. Not too many people had it. Uh, I only encountered one group that were like trying to be like, oh, I have a no boo necklace. You can't scare me. Um, but the funny thing is they it only works if it was around their neck. So I literally looked at him and I was like, it has to be around your neck for that to work. And he was like, oh, oh. and he like immediately threw it around his neck. And it's like, we we learned to ignore that. We learned to like uh, combat with like quips and all. So we got we all got pretty good at that. But no, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as like people thought it was gonna be. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that that wasn't really too much of an issue. I I, I guess in some areas it was worse than others, but um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, again, I saw the pros and cons behind it. So I mean, you know, if you you know, imagine if you had like family members who were scared to go to these events, but they really wanted to see like you perform or something like mm. I get it in that sense. I'm like, OK, yeah, she just I, wants to come see him perform. I did have a good moment with that. One of my good friends that I met like back in high school, like she she's really terrified of these kind of events. But uh, she got the no boo and went out and like literally told me like it was well, it was a great night. And like the interaction that I had with her and her group, it was like one of the best ones of the night. So I was like. It, it it works for some people. If it if it doesn't work for you, it's fine. But it's like the, it does create good moments for certain people. And it's like I was glad that I could give my friend a good experience, even with it. Hundred percent, man. Hundred um, percent. Now looking towards the future, man. Uh, obviously, we're in twenty twenty four now. We are in month mm -hmm. two of twenty twenty four. You know, getting closer and closer, inching closer and closer to that to that start time to the, you know, we got March Madness coming up really soon as well. Yep. And hoping to be out, I'm hoping to be out there. I've never been. I don't know. I, I just, I don't feel like it's, I, I don't feel like I uh, belong, but I do belong. Honestly, but it's, it's not just the monsters. It is a whole community, like aspect, whole community get together. Cause yeah. there's people who aren't monsters that come out just to like hang out with us and get to talk to us and everything. So it, it's, it's a great event. I've done it every year that I've worked. I'm just hoping I get the day off from I, both jobs that I have now. Um, so I can go out to it. Do a live podcast in the park with everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> just just oh, swimming man. at the fountain during, during the photo, just like just yeah, going one yeah, by yeah, one like... and interviewing people. <laughs> 
Well, I know oh, uh, Knott's Network does that. Knott's Network will pull people aside during the event oh, I... and kind of just like, do short interviews with them. I can't take that from them, and that's their thing. Then I have so much respect for that group. I cannot do that. I cannot take that away from them. That's that's their thing. They did, they they did great. It's it's yeah, it's them. a great event. I'm I'm hoping to be out there again. Obviously, just to spend time with my friends. It's it's a great it's a great time. So 2024 haunt season for you. Uh, what is I know there? You know, it's it's too it's too soon to really tell where anything mm-hmm. is going to end up. But uh, for at least the future, for like some of your goals that you want to try to accomplish for 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 this haunt season, what are we looking at? Do we want to return to Forsaken and kind of capitalize on what you already built on? Are you looking to kind of move elsewhere to try other things to see a new endeavor? Like, how is it looking for you for twenty twenty four? Right now, the plan I am planning on returning. I would like to be a grave digger. So I could have like the shovel during the procession. I think that's a really cool part of the show. Um, we'll see what they cast me as, though. Like I've I've got ideas for Ghost Town. I've got ideas for Goring. Um, wherever they want to put me, I'll I'll roll with it. But where I am right now, I, I want to shoot for coming back to the lake, especially awesome. if, if it potentially is the last the last year of it. Um, I know we all want to return and close it out the way that it should be. Oh yeah, man. I mean. I think that final year of the lake is probably, if it is going to be the final year of the lake, will probably be one of the most iconic ones. Uh, if that energy comes back ten times as hard, you know. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see where it, where it goes. I'm excited to see where you end up. Uh, you've had such, um, God, you've had such a very, if you think about it, very, already a very memorable, you know, haunt career, closing out two mazes, and and now potentially. If, if 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 rumors are true this year, maybe potentially close, closing out Forsaken Lake. Who knows? Uh, maybe mm-hmm. with the energy you guys got last year, they they're like, no, we signed a deal for like three more years of Forsaken Lake, so we're good. <laughs> um, I know I know a lot of us are kind of talking like we've. It's some of the conversation that we've had. Um, a few of us are are kind of worried if we do get put somewhere else because we do want all want to close out the lake, but. I know for me and like my aggression as a character, I got a lot of recognition from the higher ups. Um, and with 35 spots open in ghost town, uh, who knows if they want to, if they're going to offer me like, Hey, I know we know you want to come back to forsaken. We will offer you this role, but would you want to come to ghost town or any of these other zones? And I just be like, well, it's one of those things where it's like, I got to kind of decide, yeah. decide for that moment. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm excited to see where you go, man. I mean, you got a lot of good energy on on you, and and just to add pads to the equation, that's gonna be a lot of a lot of fun to see where that where that goes, man. I'm I'm a lot of I'm looking forward to that one right there. Um, now I'm about to. You probably you you know how these things end usually, do you? A little bit, yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna ask you maybe quite possibly, depending on you, the most hardest question of this entire podcast. I'm going to ask you two questions because I, I've been kind of noticing something all podcast that I need to get off my chest about that one. But the first question, what is your favorite scary movie? Psycho. Oh, the original ooh. Psycho. I, Alfred Hitchcock yeah, uh, original. Alfred. Yep. That is probably my all-time favorite. Obviously, the slasher that pretty much started it all. Norman Bates as a character is like just one of my favorites. He's, he, I have the Funko Bob of him, too, in black and white. He's, like, one of my favorite ones that I own. And the second question is more just a personal question for me. Uh, what's the greatest baseball team of all time, and why is it the Los Angeles Dodgers? Oh, I, I'm assuming you, you saw the, the jersey back there. <laughs> no, so it, it's kind of a story. So we, as a family, kind of have to be Padres fans because my brother is one of the coaches there, so. So catch you so he was a Dodgers fan. We'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not too into sports, so I'll watch it occasionally. So that's awesome. It, though, it's, it's not entirely my thing. That is awesome, though. You have uh, you said it was your brother. That's the coach. One of the coaches yeah, out there. He's he's one of the assistant coaches. Yeah, he he that's was brought him. back on for for the second year this year. So awesome. we, we kind of have we have that as kind of like I think it's his jersey. I haven't actually taken a look at it, but yeah, we got a bunch of Padre stuff just for him. All right. Well, you know, I'll, I'll let you go off the hook off that one. His brother, <laughs> if brother works for the Padres. You know, that's that's a whole different story. Then you know, that's that's just support. Yeah. The day. I I knew. Uh, yeah, he he uh, worked he worked his way up to it, so he deserves it. 
Oh, hundred percent. We have a football coach at the high school that I work at and he used to play for the uh, New York giants and his other, uh, the, I talked to his dad and his other son played uh, currently for, I think, um, I believe the Seahawks and, uh, gotcha. I was, and, and the dad was a Raider fan. So, you know, you can only imagine how that went for him to like support both of his boys, but then, you know, diehard Raider fans. You have so. to do different teams. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just a, it's just, they're, they're just, they're just a very committed family. But you know what he said, when it came <laughs> time for the, the team to play the Raiders, he was just quiet. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's fair. Obviously for, for us with pod, the Padres, like we're obviously supporting them, hoping that they do the best just because of, of him, even though he's not out on the field, he's up like watching oh, yeah. through the computer and also, yeah, he's training the boys, making sure they get what they need to get down. You know, I, I understand. Yep. I, I, lo- I love baseball, one of my favorite sports. So I know that the, the, the amount of uh, hard work it takes to go into those games. So, yeah. yeah. Good for him. Awesome. Good for you, my friend. I'm excited to see what comes next of you in 2024. Hopefully we see you return back to the farm uh, for the 2024 haunt season. Um, you know, you, you were on fire this year, man. I meant that. And, 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 uh, to, to anyone that would, that painted a target on my back this year in Forsaken, I, I really appreciate that because you guys really bumped it up a notch, a lot of notches as, as one of the greatest of all time. Um, so I can't wait to see what 2024 ho- holds for the, the lake and, uh, who comes back and, uh, who's going to get the, who's going to get the first scare on good old Knights of Horror here in the Forsaken Lake. I, 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 I will make a bet right now. I'll put this down right now. The first person to actually scare me in Forsaken Lake, I will give him a free Knights of Horror t-shirt. That, that might be Lex, honestly, because Lex is probably just going to target you every single time. I just, just going to avoid and dodge every single port. Just like, <laughs> oh, I'm filming this, bam, 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 filming that. You know, just, I'll be, I'll be a snake. You won't even see me. Unless, unless I'm doing my snake stuff and I end up catching you off guard again, so you probably will. You probably will. I can guarantee that. I, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting to get that cloak scare on you. I, I, at first, I completely thought I like, whacked you in the face, and I was about to be like, "Oh no!" But you, you, know, you looked over. And you're like, "You got me. You got me good. You got me good." Um, Matt, for anyone that wants to, I don't know. I don't know if you're public or or not on social media, but uh, if anyone wants to follow your crazy haunt adventures where can they find you yeah so if, if anyone wants to find me it's gonna be uh, matt.emrick117 on instagram uh, emrick's about e-m-r-i-c-k um i do have some things coming in the works uh with this very specific escape room that i got hired at and i'm, at, I'm training at there are gonna be a few posts about that so if anyone wants to follow me and check out that journey i'll be posting about that as well i'm excited i, I i'm i love me some escape room so you might see me it's a, pull it's a full contact one so there's a good chance whoever me and whoever else i'll be working with probably dragging people around I'd and tasing you choose extreme mode i can't do extreme mode but i'd love to just see you guys try to drag me around i'm like i'm six foot six there's two of you let's see what let's see what happens <laughs> I'm like we'll, we we'll do see. That. We'll see. I'm like we could do that, or I could just make it easy, and I can just get in the damn cage and just chill. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, there there is a section where someone does get kidnapped, so who knows? We'll see. Ooh, all right. Well, I can't wait. It's, to it's see. a good escape room, so. I can't wait to see, man. I can't wait to uh, see what happens with you in the future, uh, especially now. I mean, you're keeping that haunt vibe going. I love it. Um, mm-hmm. But anyone that uh, is new to the channel, we hope you guys enjoy today's episode of the Miles Horror Podcast on our uh, the road to 200 episodes. I'm excited for that. And uh, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button with that bell notification to be where every time we put out a new video, much like these podcasts, which you're going to start seeing a lot of in the next coming weeks. Um, we do original content, a uh, haunt talk, you name it, we do it. If it's horror and haunt related in Southern California, we're covering it. Um, Follow us on all of our socials. We'll be linked down below, but with nothing else more, all my friends out there, stay spooky.